Fossils. What are fossils? Well, everybody's fascinated by them. Uh, in days past, people didn't know what they were. They thought they were the bones of, dinosaur, of dragons and things. Uh, but today we know what fossils are. But how do they form? What are the different kinds of fossils? And what can they tell us about time that's gone past? Well, first of all, we need to get familiar with a big old word called uniformitarianism. Uniformitarianism. If we look at that word and break it down, the first part's uniform. And uniform means all the same. So uniformitarianism is the idea that things that happened in ancient times happen just like things that are happening today. For example, today we know that volcanoes spew out lava and can bury surrounding areas. Living things, rivers, uh, they can completely change the landscape. Well, this same thing could have happened thousands or even millions of years ago. Earthquakes, storms, and floods have been changing the earth forever. Uh, just recently, we had big mudslides and things happening out in California. Well, a mudslide, here's this creature, turtle, rabbit, something is down and all of a sudden it gets buried in this mud. Well, it dies, it's buried, the mud solidifies, and millions of years from now, somebody finds a fossil. Uh, we can study evidence of things that happened in the past and make conclusions about things that have happened today. So <clears throat> uniformitarianism is very important. It's a way of looking at the way things happen today and seeing how they might have happened in the past. Now along with uniformitarianism we have superposition. Superposition and as we can see part of that word is position. The picture above is an example of superposition. The bottom layers of sediment are the oldest because they've been buried by the younger layers on top. Superposition says that the oldest layers will be at the bottom and younger layers will be on top. Unless some event, maybe an earthquake, plate tectonics, or even you know hurricanes at the beach, unless something disturbs it, the oldest is on the bottom. For example, you got a clothes basket in your, in your bedroom. The clothes you wore last week are going to be at the bottom. The clothes you took off yesterday should be at the top unless you go digging through the hamper trying to find your favorite pair of socks, in which case you might get the whole mess turned upside down. But superposition says that the oldest is going to be on the bottom and the youngest is going to be on the top. So here's what we really need to learn. How do fossils form? Fossils are the preserved remains or traces of living things. Now fossils can help us because fossils provide evidence of how life has changed over time. Uh, we found fossils of Horses that used to be the size of rabbits, uh, and we can see how big horses are today. Fossils also help scientists infer, which means figure out how Earth's surface has changed. Um, if we find fossils of, of sea creatures and whales out in Kansas, well, that tells us that Kansas used to be underwater. And fossils are clues to what the past environments were like. If we find a bunch of fossils of creatures with long, long hair, then that tells us that maybe that area used to be really cold. Uh, and again, if we find sea creatures in a dry area, that tells us it used to be wet. So fossils can really tell us a lot about the past. So how do fossils form? Most fossils form when living things die and get buried. They gotta be buried by sediments. And we've all learned what sediments are. The sediment slowly hardens into rock and then it preserves the shapes of those organisms. Now, the scientists who study fossils, they're called paleontologists. Paleontologists. Paleontologists need to know how old fossils are. So there are two ways, two main ways that fossils are dated. And these are by absolute age and by the relative age. Now, absolute is something that we know for sure. Absolute age is found by studying the radioactive isotopes found in the fossil. It's sometimes called carbon dating. This process takes time, it's expensive, it's got to be done in a laboratory, it takes a lot of equipment. So if you're a paleontologist out in the field and you find a new fossil, well, you know, you might be too excited, you really don't want to have to wait for days or weeks or pay a lot of money. <clears throat> a quicker and easier way to get the date, age of a fossil, is through something called an index fossil. Index fossils, in ancient times, just like today, some creatures are found everywhere, sort of like ants and armadillos. An index fossil is a fossil that paleontologists know the age of and they know when they live. For example, 
there's a little creature called a trilobite. Let's say trilobites lived 300 million years ago. Well, you're a paleontologist, and you're digging down through the layers of soil, and you find this brand new strange creature, and you get excited and you're trying to figure out, well, how old is this thing? Well, right nearby you find the fossil of a trilobite. Well, the trilobite you know is 300 million years old, and since you found it in the same layer of soil that the uh, new creature was found, that uh, trilobite serves as an index fossil because you use its age to tell you the age of something else. Uh, then there's a relative age when paleontologists find a new unknown fossil. Well, excuse me. So I've already told you what uh, relative age was. That's when we use an index fossil to get an idea of how old something is without being exact. Well, as we've learned in the rock cycle from our rocks and minerals teams, uh, rocks get ground up into tiny particles called sediment, and then this sediment can turn into sedimentary rock. Well, fossils are usually only found in sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock is a type of rock that's made of hardened sediment. Now, there are several kinds of fossils, and let's talk about those different types of fossils. We have mold, we have a cast, we have petrified, preserved, carbonized, and trace. And we're going to address each one of these in a few minutes. So fossils are found in rock, excuse me, fossils that are found in rock include petrified fossils, molds and casts, carbon films, and trace fossils. Now mold and cast, they work together. Other fossils form when the remains of organisms are actually preserved in substances such as tar, uh, amber or ice. Um, tar and amber, uh, these are natural products. Tar is uh, sticky, gooey stuff. Creatures may get sunk down into the tar and they get preserved. Amber is the tree sap, like a pine tree that's turpentine. Maybe an insect gets stuck in there. And ice, well, we know what ice is, so maybe in, during an ice age, a creature gets, dies and gets buried in a glacier and, and stays there. We have petrified fossils. Petrified means to turn into stone. A fossil might form when the remains of an organism, the dead fish or something, or a crab or lobster, when it becomes petrified. Petrified means it actually turns to stone. Petrified fossils are fossils in which minerals have replaced all or part of the organism. So now, petrified is usually going to be in relationship to a mold and cast, which we're going to talk about in a minute. So here we go, molds and casts. These are the fossils that we all like to see so much. This is, this is where the, the dinosaur bones and things like this come from. The mold is a hollow area in the sediment that's the shape of an organism or part of an organism. So when you think mold, think of a jello mold or a cake mold. So what happens is the creature, uh, let's, say, let's say a crab dies and it sinks to the bottom of the ocean and it gets covered up with sand. Well, over millions of years, this sand is going to get compressed and packed around the body shape, the shape of this crab. Well, as time goes on, the crab itself is going to disappear. It's going to rot. Water's going to soak in and out and, and pass through this, this rock and stuff, this sand. The crab disappears, but there's a hollow shape in there that's shaped like the crab, what the crab used to look like. That would be the mold. Okay? Now, as, million, as time goes on, millions of years, water soaks through this hole. When the water soaks in, the water may soak and then dissolve out, but it leaves behind these little tiny bits of dissolved minerals. And so over millions of years, these minerals gradually fill up this space in there. And so finally, you've got, a new, you've got the shape of that uh, crab, only now instead of it being the, the crab's body and flesh and stuff or the crab, the shell, it's now made out of minerals. So that would be the cast. A cast is a copy. Cast is a copy. Mold is the hole, the shape. The cast is the copy. And this would be petrified. So the, the copy of the organism, since it's made out of minerals, that would be considered uh, petrified. Another type of fossil would be a carbon film. Now, everything alive on our planet has carbon. We are called carbon-based life forms. And because we have carbon in our bodies, when your body, if, if a cre and leaves and animals and insects, everything has some carbon. So 
if something happens to that creature, if it gets smashed down between two rocks or something or gets buried really tightly, the everything might disappear except for the carbon film. Carbon film is almost like a film negative. It, uh, it looks like the creature, but it's almost like somebody drew it. When sediment buries an organism, some of the materials that make an organism can become gases. The gases escape from the sediment, leaving nothing but the carbon behind. Eventually, we have a, a picture, sort of, of that creature, but it's going to be just like a picture. So here we have, it's, it's easy to tell on the right, this is a carbon film. Uh, this is this, this is a, looks sort of like a leaf, but it's almost like paint. There, there's nothing of the leaf left, just the, the, the picture of it. Now we also have something called trace fossils. Now, a trace means, okay, you can tell she was there because she left traces, like her, foot, her footprints were in the sand. So a trace fossil provides evidence of the activities of ancient organisms. A fossilized footprint where a creature walked through the mud or uh, a nest that was dug in the mud or something. So the burrows, things that were found deep in these layers of soil, these, these stone and stuff, nothing of the creature itself but just evidence, uh, even dinosaur poop. That's going to be an that's going to be a trace that that creature was there. They can so footprints, um, nesting areas, even eggshells. Those would be trace fossils. Over here on the right, you can actually see this is these are footprints that are you know in some mud that got hard and solidified and and's been there. Now, preserved remains are just like the, the word says. They've been pre preserved. And we probably don't find near as many re preserved remains as we do of other types of fossils, uh, especially um, petrified. A preserved remains, it's where part of the actual creature remains. Uh, some of the remains get, res get preserved when, they, when organisms get trapped in tar. Uh, out in California, there's a thing called the La Brea Tar Pits, where they found thousands of fossils where there'd be water on top of the tar. The creatures would step down to the edge to drink the water. They would get caught in the tar and then eventually get sucked down into the bottom of it. And since it's oil, it would preserve their bodies. Uh, mosquitoes flying around, they would, they were, or different kinds of insects would light on the side of a tree and get stuck in the sap. Then that sap would harden, uh, turn into almost a plastic and we call that amber. And then, of course, we have freezing during the Ice Age, uh, mammoths and giant cave bears and all these other monster creatures that saber-toothed tigers. We found bits and pieces in, in glaciers here and there. So that would be frozen into ice. So up here, this would represent some kind of insect, maybe. Who knows what it is, but it was trapped in some amber, and they found it later. Um, so preserved remains is when you actually find bits and pieces of the original creature. By studying the fossil record, we can tell how life on our planet has changed. <clears throat> um, the fossil record shows evidence about the history of life on Earth. The fossil records also show that different groups of organisms have changed over time. Um, we know that the older rocks, the deeper, deeper, deeper we go, the older rocks, the only thing we find down there are very, very simple, very elementary organisms, um, microscopic creatures. The younger layers, then we get up to the age of the dinosaurs, and as we come even further closer to, to the present day, we find that the dinosaurs disappeared, then we find the giant mammals, and then we come on till, till today. So the older rocks have the oldest fossils, much simpler organisms. <clears throat> And the younger rocks contain uh, more complex uh, organisms like we find today. In other words, the fossil record shows that life on Earth has changed and keeps on changing. So again, what do fossils tell about how organisms have changed over time? Paleontologists, remember these are people who study fossils, they use fossils to build up a picture of Earth's environments in the past, what, what was life like. Fossils also provide evidence of Earth's climate in the past, how it was, how it's changed over the millions and millions of years. And they can use fossils to learn about changes in the Earth's surface. Again, a place that's a desert today at one time might have been under the ocean. So let's have a quick summary. 
Most fossils form when living things die and are quickly buried by sediment, which eventually hardens and preserves parts of the organisms. The major kinds of fossils include petrified remains, molds and casts, carbon films, trace fossils, and preserved remains. The fossil record shows that many different organisms have lived on Earth at different times and that groups of organisms have changed over time. So, here's a chart real quickly. We're talking about fossils. Fossils can either be the preserved fossils or they can be rock fossils. This is petrified. So under preserved fossils, we could have them trapped in amber, which is the sap, the, the sap from trees. They could be buried in tar pits, which is, we know, oil-based. Or if we're very lucky, they may be frozen in ice. Then we have rock fossils, which could be trace fossils. Remember, these are things like footprints and, and burrows and nests. They could be cast in molds, which is where the creature was buried in sediment. When the creature deteriorated, it left behind the shape of its body. Then over millions of years, that shape of its body got filled in, and it turned into a, a copy or, a, or a, a cast. It looked like it. Remember, cast is the copy. The mold is the whole. Petrified fossils. Um, a lot of times we might have tree, uh, bit, bits and pieces of wood and stuff like that that's turned into stone. And then we have carbon film. That's where the creature actually disappeared, but it almost looks like a layer of paint, which is nothing but the carbon left behind. Okay, I hope you learned a lot from this lesson.